Hello and welcome. It is Friday, March 27th, and this is a quick introduction to Google Classroom. Uh, welcome everybody online, and uh, this will be recorded. We'll place it on our ESU5 Technology Integration website. Right before we jump into the introduction to Google Classroom, I'd love to have just a quick conversation around what in the world is going on. Um, this is a website where I'm collecting some, some teacher resources for our closures. In the moment, the Department of Education is suggesting that schools have two options for moving forward. One is uh, continuing with educational opportunities that allow for kids to move on. It looks kind of similar to what we do in our classrooms on a daily basis. Another is a enrichment opportunities that is defined a little bit differently. But I think we want to focus on what is an educational opportunity in the moment. And I, and I want to take a deep breath. Let's take a moment. Everybody in and out. We're all great teachers. We're all wonderful teachers. We understand the best practices around education. We understand for kids to learn. They need some input. We need to teach something, present something. So that, that might be... Uh, for example, a, a reading that you want them to do. That might be a video that you want them to watch. That might be a, a Zoom connection between you and the kids. Um, there, there's different components, right? We, we could, the, but the biggest point here is that when we talk about educational opportunities and, and we're thinking about some new content, the kids need some input around what is that new content. So once again, maybe it's a YouTube video or something like a reading, an online article, or maybe it's reading a chapter or a not even a chapter in the book. I think that'd be too ambitious. Reading a section of that book over the span uh, uh, for, for our weekly experience. Um, after getting done with that input, I, it's, it's really recommended that we have some sort of a process activity. And here we're talking about a quick check for understanding after kids have, 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 have watched or read whatever it is we've asked them to watch or read. Um, without the check for understanding, it's hard to know whether the kids read or watched, or if they did, how deeply they, they learned uh, in relation to that, that, that content. After we get our process activity done, uh, we, we want to engage kids with some practice around it. That might be practice of key vocabulary. Maybe, for example, you're using Quizlet and get them in to practice some, some key, vo key terms, for example. It, it might be identifying processes. So if we're thinking about math, math, maybe it's the sequence of steps that we want the kids to get through to multiply fractions. Um, and, and so maybe it's identifying then what those are. Then finally, it's the, it's the product that we want kids to create something, create something. And we're not talking about a huge 25 slide long Google Slides presentation. We're not thinking about a 32 page long essay. We're thinking about something quick. It might be one slide. It might be a paragraph that we're asking kids to create, to show what they know in relation to whatever it is we're talking about. Um, so it's so wonderful. I, I share this because I think it's important that we all, again, deep breath, manageable expectations. Effectively, what I hear our district saying is that we want kids to get through in one week what we might expect kids to do in one day in our classroom and in the classroom. We're, and so we're not expecting the same degree of rigor as we would, could in a normal context. With that said, let's jump into Google Classroom. All right, I'm gonna change my screen and, I'll sh and actually before I do that, I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna open up the chat and I'm going to share with you the link to that website. And so that'll take you right to the digital age pedagogy content. There's a lot, other, there's a lot of content on there. Um, and, and so feel free to dive, dive right in. Um, coming over to Classroom. All right. So here we are in Google Classroom. Uh, I am logged in as a teacher. 
And uh, so to do that, I just went to classroom so I can search for it. Classroom Google. Classroom Google. I bet that takes me to Classroom Google. Google Classroom is classroom.google.com for those playing at home. Uh, remember, right now I'm in the full screen. You can get out of the full screen at any time by pressing escape. And then if you want to go to your classroom and, and play as I play, that's wonderful. If you want to just watch, and, and that's okay too. I, if you have a question, I'd love for questions. Before we jump right in, I would like to ask you all, how confident are you you can use Google Classroom? So you should see a poll jump up. The question is, how confident are you you in your skills with Google Classroom? I can do it alone. I got it. I can do it with some help. I can do it with a lot of help. Please notice I did not put the option up there that you can't do it. You can do it. Yeah, take another 20 seconds, 30 seconds. I've got seven of our 13 folks, eight, nine, 10, 11, one more, two more, another 10 seconds, 12. All right, I'm gonna end the poll and now I get to share the results. So, so you all are feeling uh, kind of in the middle. There's a couple of us who are really thinking, man, I, I could use a lot of help. Um, but uh, most of us are thinking, I, I have an idea of what this is and what it can do. Let's, let's jump right in. Okay, so great. I'm on my teacher dashboard. So if, if you have already created your class, you jump in to whatever class it is you're teaching. So I'm going, but if you have not, you'd come up here to the plus and you'd uh, create a new class and we can call this uh, coronavirus example. Ooh, that sounds delicious. And create. So we have created a new classroom. It's going to process just for a moment and then it'll pop us right into our home screen. Within Google Classroom, there's our, and so it actually pops us through a few, a few uh, walkthroughs, which is nice. So we might even do that with them. Um, on your stream, you can see at the top here, there are four different tabs when, when you're inside of your Google Classroom. The stream of events is, is more for those daily class announcements. That's how I'd recommend you use it. And that's, that's actually what it's saying right here, that I can create an announcement to share with my class. I can reuse announcements if I wanted to reuse an announcement. Um, so um, good, let's try it. So I'm gonna create an announcement. And uh, so welcome, welcome to class. Here's an announcement. Maybe you would want to share something like today, we are working on, or this week, we are working on blah, 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 blah. Um, I, I, I recommend, instead of saying this week, actually, or today, that you actually give it dates. As your class, as your stream gets more populated with, with things, it, it will be a little bit, uh, it's kind of like Facebook. If you're on, if you're on Facebook, this, the stream continues to flow with the most recent posts at the top. And, and so the posts can get a little bit lost, um, which is why I'd recommend including a date as one of the first things. So I might say 3-27-2020, and then welcome to class. With my announcement, I can add a few things. I can add uh, some resources from Google Drive. I could add a link to a specific spot on the internet. I could add a file saved on my computer. Or I could include a YouTube video, for example. Um, we're going to play with classwork significantly in greater depth in the next session, starting right at three. But um, I want you to think about this place on your stream really as an announcement. And when I'm done, I can post right to my class. 
uh, I also want you to notice that I can post one announcement to multiple classes. So let's say, I mean, this, this is the welcome message for the week. And, and so the week of uh, March 30th, I think is Monday maybe, um, week of March 30th, and you might have a, a similar welcome message that instead of trying to get in and out of multiple classes at this, uh, you, you could just, my, in, can you hear me now? Can you, now you can hear me, my internet got bad. I, I, I bet I paused for just a moment. Um, point being, you can, you can reuse an announcement inside of one class, as well as host one announcement to multiple classes with, with one click. Good, so great, here's my welcome. It's going to four classes and wonderful. It doesn't allow me to add students. I can actually give an announcement to a specific student if I want to. The reason it's not allowing me to do that is that there must, we don't have any students in the class that I just created yet, okay? Uh, but that's that's why. So great. So here's here's my announcement. You'll notice that uh, I can also comment on the announcements. Your students can comment on the announcements as well. Uh, that's the default. I I believe we can we can turn that off. But I I actually recommend you leave that on. That students are able to uh, comment on your announcements. Um, good. This is the stream page. Um, this is where, when there is a new assignment, that new assignment will automatically appear in your classroom stream. But to add a simple announcement that you want to share with everybody, we, we can share something with our class and then select which class as well as which students do I want to send this announcement to. Good. Let's look at the next tab. This is where I am able to create graded work, graded things. Remember, the announcement is not a graded experience. This is just the information that we're sharing with kids. Here, inside of, of my classwork, I have the option to create, uh, I have the option to create multiple spots, multiple things. And, this, we're, and again, we'll dive deeper into the classwork at, at three o'clock, right? Once we, once we get to three o'clock, we'll dive deeper. Um, but one thing I, I really like is the use of topics. If you're, if you're planning to use Google Classroom, I would recommend that you create topics by week. So week of uh, 3.30, uh, maybe is Monday, for example, and then, you'll notice that across the top here, we'd see uh, uh, multiple topics. You can then say week of four or six, maybe if that's a Monday, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, and, and so you'll notice that the new, the new content that you create goes up, right? Goes, up, goes to the top. I can move, so let's say I, I made a mistake. I, I wanted this one at the top. I can move it up, that's okay. I can move it up by clicking on those three, three dots and move it up or move it down. Um, but I, I, I really like using these topics so that then potentially, as you're thinking about sharing input, engaging kids in some practice, maybe asking kids to create a quick product remembering that we're thinking about 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 an hour in in high school potentially more like a half an hour of work in in elementary per subject area in the middle school high school we're thinking like time on task we're not thinking two hours we're thinking maybe sharing a quick video maybe we could share a quick video and then ask kids a question about the video, and then give them maybe a practice activity, practice this vocabulary in Quizlet, and then create a quick product. So, I, uh, and I, I'll show you how to do those things once we dive deeper at three o'clock into our assignments, all right? 
but uh, this is where in the classwork, this is where I create the things that I want to give students feedback on. Let me pause and say, I didn't say grade students on. I said give students feedback on. Across our districts, we have, we have multiple perspectives on grading. And please, uh, please follow the guidance that your administrative team is giving you on what are expectations. What I'm sharing is more around these best practices in the world that we live in. We, I mean, and when I say the world that we live in, remember that best practices in education are still best practices in education um, in providing that input, the process, the practice, and the product. All right, I'm gonna share my screen again. That was my disclaimer, by the way. Um, so great. We'll, we'll dive deeper into what these things are once we get to three o'clock. At the people spot is where I can add co-teachers if I wanted to add a co-teacher. It's also where I can invite my students. So um, within your school domain, it should be fairly easy to, to start searching for a name and it's actually pulling these out of your school domain as well as out of your contact list. So um, Lexington Public Schools is not inside of ESU5.org, neither is Fairbury Jeffs. So I, I can just simply start adding their names. Um, let's see here, Jody, and she'd show up right there. I can select her and then I'd say invite and then she would receive an, an invitation to our Google Classroom. Now, uh, I wanna show you what that would look like. I'm gonna send it to our dummy account here. ESU5 student. Um, hmm, um, is that right? No, it's student at ESU5.org. Aha, invite. All right, so I've invited my student. What does that look like from the student side? So here is that student account. And when I refresh my inbox, I see I have a class invitation. So please note, we are now looking at the student side of things. When, I, when the student opens that invitation to your class, they then click on join. And now they're inside of your class. When they go to Google Classroom or classroom.google.com, they will also see all of the classes they are taking. Remember, you see all of the classes you're teaching and they see all of the classes they're taking. So when they open it up, so they, they get to see, here's, here's the student response to our announcement, which is, which is great. And when I come back over to our stream, I would see that, that my student, when I refresh, has commented on two class comments. Here it is, student response. Good. All right. So we, inside of people is where I would be able to invite my students. Um, if you have a, a class list, that's great or you can simply start typing their names and they'll start showing up. The final tab across the top is our grades. And in the moment, we haven't assigned any work that's graded, and, and so we wouldn't see anything, we don't see anything in here. We'll see that at three o'clock once we start adding some activities. Another thing that I want to play with with you is inside of my settings. So inside of my settings is where I can give more description if I wanted to give more description about the class, but it's also where I get to know a little bit about that stream. So I said students can post and comment inside of the stream. If you don't want students to post and comment inside of the stream, you can turn that off. Maybe you don't want them to be able to post a new announcement to the entire class, but you do want them to comment. Or maybe you don't want either. And so this is, this is where you'd be able to turn that on and off. Um, and so this is harder to explain without an example, 
but but in terms of the classwork on the stream remember when you create something an assignment in the classwork tab it will automatically then go to your stream there's a couple different ways that can show up in the stream one it can be this condensed version collapsed or two you can see all of the details the description inside of the stream or you could exclude that content from the stream and that's up to you too i personally like the condensed version of that because i don't want uh, to overwhelm the the stream of of stuff great this last component is around the grading and um there isn't a lot that's going to make a lot of sense in the moment around the grading until we see it. Um, so I'm going to close out of that and I'm going to stop my screen share. And I want to, with nine minutes left, I would like to hear from you. What questions do you have? This would, again, this was meant to be the introduction to what it is. Then we'll dive deeper into the assignments. Hey, Nick, where did, you, where did you get that class setting at? Where were you at in the grades? Good. I'm going to share my screen one more time, Jolene. And, and so remember, this is, this is our home screen here. And uh, right up here in this gear, this gear will open you into your classroom settings. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Great question, Jolene. Another question, please. Becky's got it. All right. Uh, let's look at another thing. Another thing here. Let's say I am not a math teacher and I don't want a uh, ruler and whatever those two things are called on the top of my classroom. So therefore, I could select a different theme. And now we're just getting a little bit artsy about it. But uh, I can look at the general stuff or maybe I know that this is a an English classroom and now or maybe this is a world languages classroom here it is world studies or maybe you don't see the Spain flag and so you, you want the globe and now I can change uh, the, the class theme um, I can upload a photo of my own if I desired to do so but uh, don't have to do that either um, good in the chat, we got uh, want to know how to do a poll in Zoom. OK, uh, good, Sarah. Um, if you want to do a poll in Zoom, and that's a great question. It's not about classroom, but that's OK, right? We're all thinking about potentially using Zoom to create uh, or to facilitate the student to teacher connection. So um, when you open your Zoom, one of the buttons on that dashboard when when you're in there is polls when you open it up you can then uh create let me go stop sharing so when you open polls and you can't do that right now because you're in my zoom room right when you open polls then you'd click on the edit button and that's where you'd be able to add and then it pull it pulls me into um, my my zoom and now I can add a specific poll I, I instead of asking like multiple choice questions that are that are very specific I'm going to cancel here I have two polls let's see if I can find them here where'd they go there they are um, I, I only have two polls I have the quick self-assessment how confident are you that you can do this and then I have a choose the correct response. And, and then I would say what A, B, C, and D are. And then I, I, so what's the capital of the United States of America? A is Denver, B is Washington, D.C., C is Seattle, and D is Miami. And, and so the students would get the poll. They, of course, would choose B because they know it's Washington, D.C. And then I would get those responses. You can then choose to share them back to the kids or not. All right. 
We're coming back in. We got a question from Daniel. Uh, what kind of devices will students need to access Google Classroom? I strongly recommend that it's a, 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 um, a computer or a Google uh, Chromebook. That's, that's the best type of device. However, any device, including your phone, including the tablets, are able to get into a Google Classroom. And the same thing is true of Canvas, by the way, for schools that are using Canvas. That's a good question, Danielle. Um, more questions, please. We got another four minutes before we, we transition and add more depth into the classwork. I have one now, um, and you might have covered it, but um, when, I, uh, when I look at the topic, adding a topic, and I put the week of March 30th, is that going to show up on the stream? Um, or is that somewhere where I need to direct them to go if I want to keep everything in a week folder? Person? Good question. Great question. So we, we added topics. The recommendation was under your classwork to add topics by week. I really do think that this will help you organize as the year goes long. I mean, the current recommendations from our commissioner is that this is the status quo for the remainder of the year. When you create a topic, when you create a topic, it does not go into your stream. So that, that's also why I would recommend the stream is more for the announcements and uh, you, you'd want to direct your kiddos to the classwork in order to see, for example, that, that input. So you might then add a link to or add a YouTube video with a quick question about the video inside of Classroom and then add an assignment for practice or a quick uh, something or other for, for that pro product. Great question. Uh, more please. Even if it's not something that you necessarily um, if it's not a direct assignment that you want them to have done by the end of the week, if maybe it's additional material that they can look at, you would still put that under that week of, or would you put that into the stream in order to avoid confusion with what you actually want done or need done for the class? Um, One and, and excellent. Thank you for diving deeper. I, I would recommend that you would leave it in the classwork because it pertains to the specific week. If there is something that's more fun, maybe, or, or, or just more broad, then maybe I'd po post it as an announcement. But if we're talking about some supplemental information, uh, maybe a, a reading or a video, or maybe it's an activity that's not going to be graded, this is just an extension activity. Um, remembering that I, I'm, I'm looking at a couple teachers from Freeman. At Freeman, the expectation is only one assignment per week. And so potentially you're only getting through the input in the process per week. Uh, at other spots, you're, there's a little bit more, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different expectations that we're trying to juggle right now. And, and, and um, potentially then you could add an assignment that is an optional extension. Um, you can still give feedback on it and, and we'll see grading inside of, of, of Google Classroom. But remember, you, you can grade inside of Google Classroom without having that grade in your PowerSchool, right? Uh, the, the, so please follow whatever the, the guidance from your administrators is on putting grades in PowerSchool. I, I, I know that that is different across multiple districts represented. More, please. We got another minute before it's uh, three o'clock, and then we'll dive right into uh, the the assignments. Nick, I've been using since the beginning of the semester, but I haven't been doing a good job of organizing things. Can I go back now and organize those things better? Yes, yes, you can. I, and I would most definitely recommend it. And potentially, instead of trying to organize everything that you've done since the beginning, uh, maybe you add one topic for BC, before Corona, <laughs> and then AD of or I don't know, but 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 seriously, I, 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 I that's up to you. If you want to go back through and uh, organize.
analyze the entire thing by unit. I think that's wonderful, Cindy. But but uh, I don't if that I don't I don't know that I would do everything. But that's an is there an easy way to do that? Say that again. Is there an easy way to do that? And if I put them into a topic, will they move away from? So I'm not seeing so many on my stream thing. They won't. They won't get out of your stream. Unfortunately, they won't get out of your stream, which is why, again, I strongly recommend for everybody online that that as we we create things inside of a Google Classroom, that you're creating them uh, using those topics. Because you're right, Cindy. If, if you're using Google Classroom, it'll look a lot like your Facebook stream, and it'll be easy to lose stuff over time. All right, so excellent. I'm going to stop the recording.